All right, everybody, welcome to JG9 Live. Hope you guys are ready to have a lot of fun tonight over the next 90 or so minutes. My name is Jaworgar9, and we are about to play a little bit of trivia on my YouTube channel. I've been showing off my football knowledge to you guys, and now it's time to flip the tables and see what you guys are because this is a game show unlike anything else out there. This game is going to put you guys in the driver's seat. You're going to have the opportunity to display your football knowledge and win cash prizes while doing so. If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you so much. YouTube is a simulcast. There is no way to play on YouTube. You can watch on YouTube, but you can't play on YouTube. You will want to head over to Twitch if you want to play on YouTube. Mike is bet. Yeah, it's, it's far away from me. There we go. That's, that's more like it. All right, so how the game works is like this. We are going to play four preliminary rounds of multiple choice trivia. Each round will have 10 questions. Each question will have four possible answers. Your job is to pick the right one and click the right answer on your computer or your mobile device. You get points for answering correctly, but you lose points for an incorrect answer. So be smart about how fast you buzz in or if you buzz in at all. Just keep that in mind. You get more points for answering fast. So if you answer the question in two seconds, your total increases significantly more than if you answer in 13 seconds. And you will have 15 seconds to answer each question. I know some people are thinking it, but there is no incentive whatsoever for looking up the answers online since you're only slowing down yourself and you're significantly limiting the number of points that you can receive. Now, at the end of each round, whoever is the winner advances to the championship. You have to win the round to make it win or go home. We're going to do this for four rounds. And assuming we have no duplicate winners or ties, we're going to have at least four players in the championship. But we have room for a few more. And how are we getting any extra players, you may ask? Well, that is where the donations come into play. Now, before we go any further, I just want to say this is a completely free game. You do not need to pay anything whatsoever to play or win the cash prize. But if you do want to pay, this could be of interest to you. Throughout the night, you can donate by clicking the donate button that is pinned at the top of the comment or down below where it says add to the prize pool. You can click on either of those and we'll take you to a Streamlabs website. Anyone who donates 20 bucks or more automatically goes to the final. If you donate less than 20 bucks, you get to play in a play and knock around HQ trivia style where the last one standing gets the final spot. If you donate between $10 and $19, you get a special power-up. And how the power-up works is that as long as you come into the top five in any of the rounds, you automatically make it. Ranger Hanky with a $12 donation. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. That gives you that power-up for rounds one through four. You utilized that last time and got into the final that way. So... I'm going to have five minutes on the clock at halftime, and we'll take an eight-minute break at the very end of the game, so you can donate during those times. You can donate any time during the round or the game you want, but why donate other than the fact you get a pass to the final? Well, that's because the winner of the 10-question multiple-choice championship wins 50% of all the donations. The larger the pot, the more money you have a chance at winning. It all depends on how much gets donated. I'll update everything manually as it goes on, but again, I want to emphasize this. Completely free game. You do not need to pay anything whatsoever to play or win the cash prize. There is no buy-in, nothing like that. You can donate nothing and still win the prize pool. But obviously, the more money in the pool, the more money of a chance at winning. Tonight, 51 bucks in the pot, and that can increase as the night goes on. Again, if you're watching on YouTube, you'll want to head over to Twitch to play. Unfortunately, there's no way to play on YouTube. Believe me, if I could play on YouTube, I would, but... There is no way to play on YouTube. You want to head over to Twitch by clicking that link pinned at the top of the comment or the link in the description. So with all of that being said, are there any questions in the chat about how this game works? Any questions at all? Um, as I load up the first quiz for um, on the quiz kit extension. I should also know if you're a first time player, thank you so much for tuning in. We do this every Wednesday night. We play some live NFL trivia for cash prizes. It's a lot of fun. We've been doing this for about three and a half years now. It's been a blast. So, uh, what you need to do, there should be something on the right side of the screen. This is your name on the leaderboard. I need you to click on that box, and then click grant permission. If you don't do that, I have no way of identifying who you are. You just show up as anonymous on the leaderboard. Michael Hoda with a five. Thank you so much. Hey, JG. Hope you're well, brother. Along with the rest of the JG fam. Greetings from Brazil on your anniversary. Thank you for spending your anniversary with me, man. Congratulations, man. Congratulations on your anniversary. That's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. In Brazil, on your anniversary. That is the way to do it, man. Frank, be with you. Guess what day it is. Oh, yeah. Guess what day it is. Take a while. I guess it's where I'll be tomorrow. Yep. I got a feeling you're going to be at the Marlins game. I have a feeling you're going to be at the Marlins game. Um, also, we just learned Hall of Fame game is happening with the um, with Bears-Texans, and that is taking place on my birthday. So that'll be a fun stream. That'll be fun. K kick off the season on my birthday. That'll be nice. 
Uh, do you feel like a an airline steward after reading the rules every week? I don't even have a script at this point. I used to read off the script for the rules, like I wrote it down, and now it's just I I just say it. <laughs> it just I don't even have a script with anything. Nothing that I do is a script. That but like besides like the videos, but like the the um the JG9 news stuff. There's no script for that. There's no script. I just talk, and that's I'm, I'm really happy with the reception on that channel because you guys seem to like it. I just talk. It's awesome. Um, so with that being said, um, any questions about how the game works? Um, there should be something on your screen right now if you are watching on Twitch that says Open and Kickoff. This is the first round. It's how every game of JG9 Live starts. There is no central theme whatsoever to the questions. They can be about anything and everything relating to the NFL, so we're going to be going all over the place for this one. If you can't see the quiz kit thing that says Open and Kickoff, please let me know because you're going to click the answer on the screen you don't type it in the chat, you click the answer on the screen. Again, if you're on YouTube, you can't see it, you'll have to go over to Twitch, but if you're on Twitch, you should be able to see it. If you can't see it, let me know now, speak now, forever hold your peace. How's it going on, No, Welcome to the stream. What happens to P. Diddy now? Does he go to prison? I mean, the FBI doesn't raid your home if they don't have concrete evidence. Yeah, it's going to be... That. You can't see the quiz thing. I should, I should also note, before going any further, the game works on computer, the game works on mobile. You might have to update to the latest version of the app. It does not work on... I think someone said they added it to tablet. So it might work on tablet now. It didn't used to. Now it might. But it doesn't work on smart TV. So, uh, Steve, try refreshing. Sometimes that helps. That's obvious. You can't see it. How's it going? Uh, Maestro Pigeons. Let's go. Let's go, NT. Let's get the spread. Uh, P. Diddy. Does P. Diddy go to prison? Have I seen Concussion? Yeah, I thought the acting was good. I, I just thought it was kind of boring. I thought the movie was kind of boring. Um, powerful at times, but also... I didn't really care for the love story that much. I really didn't care for the love story. How's every week's going so far? It's going well, I'm Kelly. It's going, it's going well. Just working, just grinding out. UFL season starts, MLB season starts. I can't complain. Best time of my life last night, man. Date nights are the best. Oh, man. Oh, that's good to hear, Shamans. That is good. That is good. Al Michaels to eat vegetables? I, I highly doubt that. <laughs> I highly doubt that. You have off work tomorrow and Friday for the first two days of opening day. Had a lot of PTO to use at the right time for the tournament and baseball. That's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. Yeah, pros up to Baltimore. Absolutely. Scary stuff for that bridge collapse. Scary, scary stuff. All right. Did I get your email? Yes, I, I got to get back to you. I have, like, I've been working on the trivia questions and the videos all day today. I have not got a chance to check my emails. But I did see that. Also, I should know, before going any further, before going any further, let me show you something. I want to show you something really, really cool. I have something that no one else in the world has. I want to, I want to show you something um, that I, I will... A um, little bit of a tease. I'll, I have something that no one else in the world has that I got today, which I'm really, really happy about. All right. Let's get this bread. Good luck to everyone. And here we go. Question number one. Let's do it. Of the four teams he played for, what's the only one that Hall of Fame quarterback Brett Favre did not start a game with Jets, Falcons, Packers, Vikings. Again, click the right answer on your computer or your mobile device. The faster you answer, the more points you can receive or lose if you get it wrong. If you don't know, you can skip it. Sometimes skipping is your best play. You don't get any points, but you don't lose any points either. I'll give you a hint. It's not the Packers. I'll give you a hint. It is not the Packers. When's the big announcement? Um, I just got the item. So we'll do it. Uh, we'll do it before round two. We'll do it before round two. I'm really excited about this. I'm really excited about this. It's, it's because you guys are the best. It's because you guys are the absolute best. Falcons are the right answer here. Falcons are the right answer. Jasmine and her family building near Erie, Pennsylvania to watch the total solar eclipse. <laughs> Jasmine shouts to the clouds. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, man. Oh, that's funny. That is funny. What was the only AFC South team at the 2023 NFL Draft that spent a first-round pick on a defensive player? Was it the Jags, the Titans, the Colts, or the Texans? Hawaii college football game at 11.59 Eastern with a rain delay and triple overtime. Ooh. It's not college football after dark. It's like early morning. College football in the morning. Oh, man. Hawaii test doesn't even phase me at this point on the West Coast. Like, when I was on the East Coast, I used to try the Hawaii test, and now it's like, um, I'm up anyways. Texans are the right answer here. Like, sometimes my schedule is so off that I'll be up for certain Premier League games, as in I'm still finishing my day. Like, it's still the same day to me. 
like like today like i like i saw like high point was playing in the cbi uh the final and i, and I was like working on my video and i got like it's game day i'm like it for me it's like the same day like i haven't left i haven't left tuesday question number three in jc garrett's time as head coach of the cowboys cowboys play three home playoff games who did they not play seahawks packers eagles lines no the colts didn't draft anyone besides richardson for the first round, no. They um they didn't draft on Winnipeg Richardson. The Texans did. Alright, everyone related to her is fine, so that's good. That's good at least. That's good. Andrew Cannon working the regionals this year for the NCAA tournament. He deserves it. I'm not surprised because Jim Nance uh, retired from basketball, so I, I get that. Alright, right answer here is the Eagles. I laughed my butt off to that story today about the Bill Sprouts. Yeah, I'm like, that was the stupidest story. One of the stupidest things I've ever seen a company do. Like, genuinely, I've seen a lot of companies do stupid stuff with the NFL. That's one of the stupidest things I've ever seen. Question four. In 2006, the Texans went 1-3 and three against the AFC East. The lone win came against what team? Bills, Jets, Pats, Dolphins. Like, when I was doing that, I was like, okay, this, this will be a fun story. But, like, I, I would think that they would make a lot of money if they... If it didn't, if they the Bills won the game, but no, they would make nothing. They made absolutely nothing if they won the game. It's the worst rigged game of all time in terms of the odds. You can't win. I'm like, who does that? Like, okay, betting four thousand dollars to win five hundred. If and by the way, the answer here is, is the Miami Dolphins. If someone gave you those odds to let's say Alabama to beat Tennessee Tech in football, okay, I'll do that. I'll do that. If someone said, okay, you bet $4,000 to win 500. This NBA team's up by 20 points with 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter. Okay, I'll do that. $4,000 to win 500 on the underdog to win the game outright when they're 4-9. and nine, They're playing a 9-4 and four team. I mean, what, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? It's so stupid. Your answer was the Dolphins. Question number five. Of his four seasons as head coach of the Chargers, what's the only one where Anthony Lynn made the playoffs? 2017, 18, 19, or 20? And I want to do a video at some point because um, I found this while researching because it was the same year. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it tomorrow or if I'm going to save it for a doc because there might be more to the story, but there was a kicker on the Cardinals that um, literally blamed CBS for being why he was terrible. I'm not even kidding. You know what? Like, there's like announcer drinks and everything. There's a kicker on on um, a kicker on the Cardinals that literally said in the 80s, I was disappointed to get drafted by the Cardinals because I don't kick well on CBS. And he was being completely serious. He wasn't like joking. He was... Completely serious. 2018 is the right answer here. No, it was uh, it was Lee. John Lee? I think Arbaugh's the guy, yeah. He's won everywhere he's been. Man with the plan in first, J-Main, second, Milo Hyde, J-Wick, Styles Clash, rounding up the top five. NFL on Christmas, Wildcard on Amazon. Yeah, I have no problem with Wildcard on Amazon. I have no problem with Wildcard on Amazon. It's different for me than Peacock. It's way different for me than Peacock. Question number six. Of the four teams he played for, which one did three-time Pro Bowl defensive end Simeon Rice make the most Pro Bowls with? Colts, Broncos, Bucks, or Cardinals? NFL should normalize West Coast games at 10-25. No, no, because here, here's here's the problem. Here's the problem if you do that. And thank you for the, the Tier 1 reset, David Chains. 12 months, a whole year. How is it going, David Chains? Here's the problem with 10-25 games. You have to think of it not just for the fans, but you have to think of the people that work. I know people that worked, like, for the Arizona Cardinals. Buccaneers, right answer here. And they had to get to the stadium for a game that started at 1 o'clock. They had to be there by 5 in the morning. So what's it going to be like for a game that starts at 10 o'clock in the morning? It would be a nightmare. It would be an absolute nightmare. And then the players would be off their rhythm. The fans would have to get there at, like, 7 o'clock. Like, oh, wait, I should not have shown the scores. What do you think about 10 Cent Beer Night by the Indians in 1974? One of the dumbest promotions of all time. How did they think that was going to go? All right, 10 Cent Beer Night, if you limit the number of beers people get. Different story. But for that, I mean, come on. Pre-merger question. Question number seven. After four seasons in Pottsville, what city do the Maroons relocate to? Akron, Boston, Harrisburg, or Toledo? At least Disco Demolition Night, I get what they were going for, and I'm not sure they could foresee like a field invasion and whatnot. But Ten Cent Beer Night, it's like, okay, what what's the point of this? What's the point? 
Why do play... Oh, wait. I just got back from a high school retreat today. And literally tomorrow, I'm heading up north to visit Sac State and San Jose State. Have a great time, man. Have a great time. Uh, two really good schools. Two really good schools. Boston is the right answer here. Why do players face a harsher punishment for the league for gambling as opposed to aggravated assault or domestic violence? Um, that's a good question, and I can answer that for question number eight because um, it makes a lot of sense why that's the case. What's the only song that Martha Reeves and Martha and Vandellas performed solo at the Super Bowl 32 halftime show? I'm Ready for Love, Jimmy Mack, Heat Wave, or Quicksand. You could also offer medium sodas for season ticket holders for free. You could do that. So here's the thing. If you're watching a game, and let's say let's say you're watching a game with Deshaun Watson playing. You hate Deshaun Watson, and understandably so. But at no point during the game are you questioning whether the product you're watching is real. And no point during a Browns game with Deshaun Watson are you questioning whether he's trying or not, or whether he has money on the game. Players that have money on the game, it makes it seem rigged, if that makes sense. Heat Wave is the right answer here. Heat Wave. So that, that's why. It basically compromises the integrity of the game and makes people doubt whether the game is real. Like, let's say players bet on the league. Let's say players... Let's say you don't punish betting. Let's say you don't punish betting. Now players could potentially... Now you have to question, okay, is this person... Like, does this person have a parlay on themselves? Like, why are they not thrown at this guy? Um... Why they go? Why they not fight for extra yards? Do they have a parlay on the? Do they have like money on on the on prop bet or something? Question number nine: Of the four teams he played for, two-time Pro Bowl punter Matt McBriar made both Pro Bowls with what team? Cowboys, Steelers, Eagles, Chargers. I should also note uh, the scores we set the NHL round. So if this is not your strongest round, don't worry. Everything goes back to zero. I'm just gonna open the window and get some sunlight in here. So everything goes back to zero after this round. I can't believe in 24 hours I'll be at Chase Field. I cannot believe in 24 hours I'll be at Chase Field. I'm going to be there for every game this home stretch, except for the Sunday game, because I'll be doing UFL. Cowboys, right answer here. Cowboys are the right answer here. All right. Mariah Carey turns 55 today? Wow. One of the greatest vocalists of all time. One of the greatest pop vocalists of all time. Man of the Planet first, 15,000 point lead. Oh, I forgot to mention, I forgot to mention, today is um the last game of the month. Today is wild card round as well. So, um, what that means is that if you never won the game before, you can, um, whoever's the highest score also automatically makes it among any of the four rounds. I totally forgot to mention that. Will Peacock Trivia be airing in Brazil? <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess, well, I guess it can. All right, final question of the round. In 2010, the Lions went 1-3 against the AFC East. Lone win came against what team? Was it the Pats, Dolphins, Bills, or Jets? Yeah, today is wild card. Yeah, it felt insanely fast for me just because, um, I mean, it helps when it's past Halloween and your team is still playing. Yeah, it did feel fast. It did feel fast. The, the, day, the, the monsters go by way faster. The weeks go by faster right now. Who would have our chance of, playing, of winning a Super Bowl if they play for a different team? Prescott or Lamb? I'd probably say Lamb. Because I pr I'd probably say C.D. Lamb. Dolphins are the right answer here. It's a 34-27 win in Week 16. All right. Let's see the scores. Oh, Hicks and Garrick in the Brazil game. Oh, God, that sounds like torture. Styles Clash with the win. Whoa, man with a plan guessed on that one. I'm not sure they had to. I'm not sure man with the planet to guess on that one. Oh no, man with the plan. Yeah, that was question 10. Oh man, Styles Clash with the win. Oh man, so Styles Clash, you're moving on. Yeah, that was question 10. Oh, a rare Blunder. Oh, man. So, Styles Clash with the win, that one. Now, let's see. In terms of people that have never won before. Um, I don't think Woody Baltimore has ever won before. Let me double check. No, I don't see anything. Woody Baltimore on 69-234 is the leading score in the clubhouse right now. Uh, 
All right. The lone winning came against what team? People have never been in my wife's kitchen. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Um, J-May in second for the wild card. Yeah, J-May in second for the wild card. 63-7-4-2. Let me just get that in. Yeah, if you've never won the game before, you have a shot. And then, I don't... Has Steve P ever won four? I don't see Steve P on here. So Steve P right now is in third in the wild card standings. Again, we only send one through, but let's say we about tomorrow wins a round, he wouldn't be a wild card anymore. He would qualify automatically. So that's something to keep in mind. All right. We still have not got 100,000 point in round one. All right. So with that being said, we're going to do round number two called Team Roulette. Uh, before we do that, and Ranger Hankins did not get the power up there. Before we do that, I want to show you something really cool um, that one of my fans gave me, and I'm I'm so grateful for that. Um, so, as you guys know, we're doing UFL season. We're doing UFL season. All the games, pretty much. It's gonna be insane. I've got helmets of every team. I've got helmets of every single team in um, in the XFL from 2001. 2020 i've got all the usfl helmets we've got the whole studio ready to go so like all these cases behind me are going to be stacked with xfl usfl helmets having said that they don't make helmets for um for xfl 2023 they don't make helmets so i couldn't find a Brahmas helmet anywhere i could not find a Brahmas helmet anywhere um i just posted on Twitter that I was like going to like like we got all, everything but the Brahmas because they don't make Brahmas helmets I wish they made mini helmets for the XFL but they, they don't so one fan reached out to me and said hey I can make you a custom mini helmet of the San Antonio Brahmas and I just got in the mail today and I am so grateful for this um if you want to follow him on Twitter I'll, I'll shout him out after the um I'll shout I'll shout out before the um before the um the next stream. Uh, Wiley Nash, one of my fans, he made me. So I think I am the only person in the world who has a mini helmet of the San Antonio Brahmas. So the Brahmas will be represented like every other team in the UFL this season. Um, because my fan gave me a custom helmet. So <laughs> made it completely from scratch. Completely from scratch. So I have a San Antonio Brahmas helmet. I think I am the only person in the world to have a mini helmet of the San Antonio Brahmas, which I'm really, really excited about. So the suit is going to look awesome for UFL season. It's going to look absolutely incredible. But with that being said, time for round number two. Let's play some Team Roulette. You guys know if you play before, every game features this round. How it works is that I randomly spin a wheel. Whatever team it lands on, all 10 questions in that round are going to be about that team for this one. Let's see what the wheel is in store for us tonight. Let's see. We are doing 10 questions on the history of the Buffalo Bills. Any Bills fans in the chat? I'm just grabbing the nearest Bills helmet to me. It's not autographed. Uh, the autograph helmets are uh, on the opposite side of the room. But we'll put this Bills helmet up there to honor the team that we're playing. In Team Roulette. Any Bills fans in the chat? I know Summer's a diehard Bills fan. <laughs> I know that. Uh, the box office success of Air Force One led to the Avalanche being able to match the offer the Rangers had for, for Joe. I, I um, yeah, someone told me that the other night. I forget if it was you or not, but I, I did, um, I didn't know that before. I did not know that before. All right, let's play this round. Good luck to everyone. Here we go. Question. Oh, wait, how do I join? Um, so Lance, thank you for tuning in. Um, you're going to have to click on the link on the top of the screen that takes you to Twitch. There's no way to play on YouTube. You have to play through Twitch. I wish there was a way to play through YouTube, but there's not. So you have to click the link at the top of the screen, um, click on that, and then create a Twitch account completely free to play, completely free to win the cash prize. So you're going to want to head over there and do that. Question number one. In their 31-17 win over the Steelers in the 2023 wild card, Josh Allen threw three touchdowns. Who did not score one? Khalil Shakir. Stefan Diggs, Dolan Kincaid, Dawson Knox. New kickoff rule, right or the wrong move? I think it's the right move. I think it's the right move. Look, XFL, USFL kickoffs, or XFL kickoffs are fun. They're fun to watch. And 
they reduce injuries, you increase returns. No one wants to see a play where every single kickoff is going out of the end zone. They wouldn't create the game that way today, where you create a play that's boring and that's automatic. You wouldn't do that. Diggs is the right answer here. Diggs is the right answer here. You'll be at Lone Depot for most of the weekend home games and every summer home game that isn't conflicted with one of your streams. Oh, that's awesome, man. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, the baseball games are fun. I'm going to be at, a, I think, about like 45 or 50 games this year. We'll see. I have season tickets, just like last year, so. What is the only current AFC West team that the Bills have never faced in the AFC Championship? Raiders, Chargers, Chiefs, or Broncos? And we got Montgomery. I didn't think we get Montgomery. I guess that means the Rodriguez injury is a bit worse than we thought, but. That rotation went healthy. I mean, holy cow. Gallon, Kelly, Montgomery, Fott, Henry, Rodriguez. I mean, holy cow. And that's not even counting Sacconi. That's not counting Dre Jamison, potentially. I mean, that's that's not counting Ryan Nelson. Not that I'm counting Ryan Nelson. He's not great. But, I mean, holy cow. This, this team's stacked. The D-backs are stacked this year. Chargers, right answer here. Chargers are the right answer here. Will Big Ten teams who play 12, 3, and 6 usually, will they adjust the new Pac-12 teams in 10, 30 p.m. Eastern time on away games in Oregon or UCLA? My guess that's going to depend on the team. I don't think you're going to put Ohio State at like 10, 30 at night on the East Coast, but a team like Rutgers, you could. The smaller market, the smaller teams will. I don't think like Ohio State, Michigan, they're going to play like Pac-12 after dark, essentially. I know it wouldn't be Pac-12 after dark, but you get the idea. Question three. In 2005, the Bills went one and three against the AFC West. The lone win came against what team? Chiefs, Chargers, Broncos, Rares. Yeah, D-backs going to be hard to beat. I don't know if we win the division just because the Dodgers are the Dodgers, but... Oh, man, that team. I mean, you, you look at that lineup. Look at that lineup. The, I mean, we talked about the rotation. The bullpen. You got Ginkle as, as the setup man, and then Sewell when he gets healthy as, as the closer. I think Ginkle's the best setup man in baseball. And then you got... Carol Guriel, Alec Thomas in the outfield. You got Christian Walker, Marte, Perdomo, Suarez. I mean, it's good. And then Gabby Moreno, one of the best catchers in baseball. Oh, man. And then Jock Peterson probably is your DH. I mean, it's a stacked lineup. I like it a lot. Chiefs, right answer here. Question number four. As head coach of the Bills, the only AFC Central team that Marv Levy defeated twice in the playoffs. Browns, Oilers, Bengals, Steelers. It's going to be so weird being back in the stadium, though, because I was there for, like, every playoff game except for one. I wasn't there for the Thursday game when it interfered with the Jaguars because the Jags always come first. But I I was in the stadium, like, for every game, and it was, like, packed to the bone. And tomorrow's going to be packed. But going back to the days of, like, 9,000 people in the stands for, like, a Wednesday afternoon game, it's going to be weird. It's going to be very, very weird. We Chris Washington lost the Super Bowl ring while running errands. I did not hear that story. No, I did not know that. Oilers, right answer here. A security guard got injured on a Bills touchdown in 2005. I, I gotta find the story of that. I did not know that. Rocky Senior Management. I agree, just not before Sunday. Let us stick the four-game series first. <laughs> Question five, the Bills won the AFL East three times. What year did they not win it? 63, 64, 65, or 66? I got to make my predictions for the baseball season. Someone said the Mets would win the NL East and the White Sox would win the Central. Whoa, that's bold. That's bold. I can't see that. I can't see that. I think the Sox would probably be the last team I picked to win the Central. That was a rebuild gone horribly wrong. 63 right answer. I mean, if the Sox lose less than 95, I'll be impressed with their season, honestly. I can see the Cubs win the Central. I can absolutely see it. All right, let's see the scores of halfway points here we'll work with here. J. May, Scotty, Mile High, Lefty, B.W. Falk, Ranger, Hanky running at the top five. Scotty, a Bills fan, J. May ahead of him by 10,000. All right, question number six. Right, I'm just going off the top of my head right now for predictions. I have to think about this, but go top of my head for predictions. In their 37-14 win over the Chiefs in the 91 Divisional, who is the only Bill to score multiple touchdowns? Whether Kenneth Davis, Thurman Thomas, James Lofton, or Andre Reid? No, they were good in 2017. They made the playoffs that year. They made the playoffs that year. 
But for the most part, they have not been good since. All right, AL East, I'm going to take the Orioles. AL Central, give me... Ooh. Well, AL West, I'll take the Mariner. Not the Mariners, the Rangers, I mean. AL Central... I don't know if the Guardians are going to be like this here. Andre Reed's the right answer here. Like, I'm torn between... I mean, the Royals are going for it. Like, like credit to them, they actually had a decent offseason. Actually, a decent offseason. Um, yeah, 07 was the worst World Series I've seen. Question number seven. Of their four AFC Championship wins, which one was decided by the largest margin of victory? 90, 91, 92, 93. I guess Twins for the Central. I know it's generic, but I'm going to go Twins for the Central. The Wild Cards give me the Rays. Give me... I just want to pick the same teams as last year. I don't want to do that. Do the Yankees make it? I don't know. They're, they're not projected to do well this year. 90 against the Raiders of the Rams here. But the, the, the Yankees are always in it. The Yankees are always in it. Yeah, by a large margin. 51-3. What's a bloodbath? Broski, member for seven months now. Thank you so much. Am I going to do any baseball lives streams during the season we'll see we'll see i've got a lot of exciting live streams planned for um for the future a lot of exciting ones question a in their 31 27 win over the jets in the 1981 wild card three bills record a pick who's the all one out rufus Bess, phil via piano charles Rome's, or bill simpson so i'm trying to think um i got the rays as a wild card i've got the oh astros obviously um Got Astros, and I've got the Rays, Astros, and I'll go with the Guardians. I'll go Guardians. Charles Romes is the right answer here. All right, let's see the score two questions ago. J. May in first by a lot. 32, 34,000 points. All right, question number nine. Three Bills were named AP First Team All Pros in 1990. Who's the odd one out? Bruce Smith, Kent Hull, Thurman Thomas, or Andre Reid? And then NL, let's see. Braves, Dodgers, and... I'm going to say the Cubs in the Central. I think the Cubs in the Central. Wild cards, give me the D-backs. Give me the Giants. And give me the Phillies. That's what I'm going to go with. Andre Reid, right answer here. They will say if the Cardinals pitchers can stay healthy, they have a shot. But... Because the bats are there, and... Pitching staff, it's it's not great by any means, but guys have done it before. Cardinals are we're gonna be better than last year enough. That's hard, but you counsel immediate upgrade, huge upgrade. All the collapses they had in September, gone. J May in first still looks like he's gonna have this. Yeah, the cards they can't be as bad as last year. It's impossible. It's impossible for the cards to be with that with the talent on that team. It's impossible. Question ten. In 2 the Bills went 3-1 against the NFC North. The lone loss came against what team? Packers, Bears, Vikings, Lions. I'm out of here just on my knife. I can't win around future my team. I don't deserve to be here. All good, Scotty. All good. All good. You never know. You never know, but... Just one of those nights. Just one of those nights. You know, Marble's terrible. Marble's terrible. And the way he handled the whole Contreras thing was a joke. Packers ran to here. Is it going to feel a lot having the Big 12 logo on ASU Fields, Courts, and Merch starting this fall? I don't think so. Uh, ASU to the Big 12 makes a lot of sense. Because I, I, I've i wanted that for a while. I've wanted ASU to the Big 12 for a while. I don't think it's going to feel weird. J-May with the win. 89-267. So congratulations, J-May. You are moving on. Ranger Hanky not inside the top five. All right. 
with that being said, I'm going to put five minutes on the clock, five minute halftime break, chance for you to stretch your legs, go to the bathroom and increase the prize pool for tonight's show. While we have this break, I'll do an AMA, so if you have any questions, fire away in the chat, I'll be happy to answer. Uh, five minutes on the clock starting right now. I'm just going to put the helmet away just so that I don't accidentally knock it off my desk. So I don't have a lot of room on my desk, so I'm just going to put it away so I don't knock it off my desk. So yeah. All right. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Thoughts on trees? Congrats, Cowboys vid. From a while ago. That, that was great. That was great. Um, let's see. Yeah, Down Decisions, Owner's Editions, after the unanimously pass a hip drop tackle rule. Yeah, I, I hate it so much. I hate it so much. There's no way the refs are going to officiate it. There's no way they can properly officiate it. How many Sunday night games does Houston get this season? I'd probably say one. I'm probably going to say one on that. Most overrated and underrated team in MLB. Overrated Mets, underrated Marlins. I'm going to say underrated is the Nationals. Honestly, the Nationals were not that bad the second half of last season. I could see them winning like 75 this year. Um, what else? The, um, overrated? I don't think the Mets are overrated. I don't think the Mets are overrated. Um, I think they're, they're pretty properly rated. Overrated, probably the, probably the Blue Jays? Probably Blue Jays? Does JJ9 pour the milk before cereal? <laughs> I do not. I do not. Open kick off the side of my scramble. <laughs> the, ex, the old XFL. Oh, that'd be terrible. That'd be the worst way to root injuries. Did Bob Vitrino have the worst exit of a college turn NFL coach? Worst exit? Mm, it's either him or Urban Meyer. I think Meyer... Meyer's up there. Petrino might be worse, but Meyer's up there for worst exit. Is Dan Marino's last ever game in the NFL versus the Jags the worst ever lost by a Hall of Fame quarterback? I think so. 55 points? Yeah, I think so. The Saints video got mentioned on the GPS show? I did not know that. Wait, I did not... Today? Well, it had to be today because I do Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I haven't seen the... I haven't seen GPS. I have to... Gotta, I gotta check that out. I gotta check that out. Um... Yeah, so... Wait, do you think Baseball Night in America in the mid-90s was a good thing? Um... Baseball Network was terrible. Baseball Night... Baseball Network was terrible. Uh, Cubs kicked David Ross to the curb the same way they did Rick uh, Rintier when Joe Madden was sired. Pretty much. Pretty much. But I, I get why they kicked David Ross. I get it. Is PD worse than R. Kelly? No. No, not... Not from what I know. Not from what I know. They both seem pretty bad if the evidence is true, but obviously I think R. Kelly, what he did was despicable. Who won the NCAA tournament? My pick was UNC. I'm sticking with UNC. Not gonna lie, that video on the Lede dude was a tough watch. Whole 20 minute section review on the Facebook pages of a dozen more people felt uncomfortable. Yeah, I, I, I get it. I get it. Um, the thing is that it's, it's more of me having to compile as much evidence as possible. That's really what it comes down to. I can't leave any stone unturned with that. So I totally get why it might have felt like uncomfortable. I just, if I'm going to make accusations like that, like I could set myself up for a lawsuit. Like, it's, it's serious stuff when I'm alleging. It's serious stuff. So I have to cover every single base I possibly can, no matter how uncomfortable it might be. Because if I just said, oh, this man sold tickets to a Saints game one time and did that, and I alleged that, yeah, that, I, I don't think I could, I could, if I, if I said that, that was all I did, that probably, people would be like, that's, that's all the evidence you got? That's, that's it? Like, like... This is this this says nothing. This says nothing. It's it's more of the idea that I have to cover all my bases. I have to cover everything. It was almost like like the video I made on DJ. It was almost like that one that I put out in in December. Like if I show just one or two, it'd be like, oh, that's all the evidence you got. You got two videos. Like that's it. But it's more of the even if it is uncomfortable, even if it's tedious, even if it's repetitive, you have to cover all your bases and be as diligent as possible otherwise you 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 can't leave any questions unanswered after that that's really that's really what it comes down to and the and I, I will say the other thing is that everything was public everything is public information 
Um, there was nothing that I didn't like hack into anyone's Facebook. I didn't friend request people. I didn't like get around walls or stuff like that. Everything is public information. And I only included the relevant stuff. I didn't include anything about their personal life. I didn't include anything about beliefs or anything like that. It was strictly what it had to do with the Saints and the affiliation there. And I obviously cropped out every single minor because just y- you have to. You have to. So that that's really what it comes down to. I, I, believe me, I totally get it. I totally get it. I totally get that it was an uncomfortable watch. I totally get it. It was more just you have to do your due diligence or something like that. You have to do your due diligence. All right, I had to check the clip out of the um, of the playing question. Brewers finish last in the central and three more pieces of the deal. I could see that, honestly. I could see the Brewers finishing fourth or fifth in the central. I could see it. Thoughts people claiming that what happened in Baltimore was a government conspiracy? I don't see how that would be a government conspiracy at all. Why Why would that... I don't know how it would be a conspiracy. I mean, what, what would be the conspiracy? It, it just... It wouldn't make any sense. Destroy a, a city, destroy infrastructure in an election that doesn't it doesn't make any sense I'm not even sure what the conspiracy would be alright with that being said time for round number three we're going to play a game called what are we playing fourth and ten fourth and ten how this game works is like this I'm going to say a stat and I'm going to say four players and your job is to tell me what player that applies for that applies to. Now, I should note that every question features the same four players. And for this one, every single player is a, uh, let's say it's a receiver you probably know. You probably know pretty well. Because for this one, the answer for all 10 questions will be either Jarvis Landry, Sammy Watkins, Brandon Cooks, or Allen Robinson. So we're going all four receivers from the 2014 draft class. So we got Landry, we got Watkins, we got Cooks, we got Robinson. So the answer for every question will be one of those four. Does everyone get how this game works? And yeah, do not go on autopilot. I don't control where the answers pop up. Uh, Jarvis Landry made top left choice for one, bottom right choice for another. Click on the name, not the slot, because I have no idea where these answers are popping up. Saw your video today on the 86 Bills-Browns game where the company lost 12K. That was a great one. I can't believe I've never heard that story before. Yeah, I'm, I'm shocked that... Like, I'm the first one to uncover that in a, like, since it happened in 86. Because that's crazy. It, it was, like, the dumbest thing I've ever seen a company do. Genuinely. They bet on the underdog. And they don't even win anything if they win. Like, like, like I said in the video. If it was, if they charged, like, a hundred bucks for this package. If they charged a hundred bucks for the package. And you got a ticket. And you got to go to the game and everything. You got bus fare. And if you bet on the right outcome, you got a hundred bucks from these people and you made a massive profit. Yeah, I get it. I mean, it's not great odds, but I get it. But this is just stupid. This was just stupid. All right, here we go. Question number one. Let's see what we got. Made some multiple Pro Bowls. Landry, Cooks, Robinson, Watkins. Best losing record team of all time, excluding teams who got injured to hell. Okay, so that's a pretty good exclusion. Um, losing record team of all time. Um, oh, that's tough. Best losing record team of all time, excluding those that got injured. So, like, I can't do... Maybe Washington 88, maybe? Yeah, maybe Washington 88? I don't know. I might go with them. I might go with Washington 88. Am I streaming XFL? Yeah, I'm streaming all the UFL games this year. I'm streaming all the UFL games. Question number two. Was not drafted by an AFC team. Landry, Robinson, Watkins, or Cook? Did I see the Big 12 is playing a pair of conference basketball games in Mexico City for 2024-25? I did not see that. I did not see that. 2011 Seahawks. That's that's a good call. 
That's a good call for Brown Place. And by, by the way, go subscribe for Brown Place. He's got a great channel. 2011 Seahawks. That's a good call. That's a really good call. 95 Panthers, another great call. Another great call. Especially because they started off slow and they were really good at the end. I think they started 0 5. And they finished, what, 7 and 4? That's a really good call, actually. Brandon Cooks, right answer here. All right, the Terrence McGee kickoff return where he just juke the entire Saints special teams. That that was a fun that was a fun play. I do remember that. Question number three. Yeah, Jarvis Landry is a fun player. I love that guy. One Super Bowl. Cooks, Watkins, Robinson, or Landry. Thoughts on the NCAA wanting to ban player prop bets? I get it. I think player prop bets should be banned for college. I think for pros, I totally get... I totally get for pros... Well, I, think, I don't think we're counting playoff teams in this forgotten... I, I think... So 2010, I think we're just... Like, we're not counting like 2010 Seahawks or like 2014 Panthers. I think we're just counting non-playoff teams. Sammy Watkins, right answer here. You make a highlight film, some coaches. Yeah, what do you have to lose? What do you have to lose? Um, for pros, I get why prop bets are a thing. I, I'm completely in favor of pro prop bets because these pros are making money. But these college athletes are not making money. They can basically be set for life if they if they cash in on a prop bet for themselves. You're treading a fine line. At the very least. At the very least. Uh, question number four. Has a season where he led the NFL in receiving touchdowns. Watkins, Landry, Robinson, Cooks. No, Cooks didn't win Super Bowl with the Pats. Cooks, he made one. He didn't win one. Cooks did not win a Super Bowl with the Pats. At the very least, there should be legislation that says, okay, if you're going to have prop bets for college athletes, you cannot have prop bets in the state they play in. So if you want to bet in... And Arizona does this, to their credit. Arizona does a good job. Arizona, you can't put a prop bet on an Arizona player or an ASU player. Alan Robinson right here. Best hockey goalie of all time? I gotta go Wah. I gotta go Patrick Wah. I mean, I, I love Lundquist, but I gotta go Patrick. I gotta go Patrick. Yeah, 2015, he actually led the NFL with the Jaguars. Question number five. Had a season where he led the league in receptions. Robinson, Landry, Watkins, or Cooks? You know, Cooks made two Super Bowls. He lost both of them. The best Des Bryant catch I've seen yet. I don't know, like, the best catch I've seen by Des. Best catch, the, the, the game against the Packers. <laughs> Let the firestorm begin on that. In New Jersey, you can't bet on New Jersey schools. Yeah, that, that's the way it should be. At the very least, you shouldn't be able to bet on schools in your own state. At the very least. Landry is the right answer here. All right, Paul Topper in first, Jay Wicks in second. Everson Walls Hall of Fame. Ooh. I would not be against it. I would not be against Walls in the Hall of Fame. Had a season of 1,000 plus yards receiving with three different teams. Watkins, Robinson, Cooks, or Landry. I can think of guys before Walls in the secondary that I would put in. Like Lamar Parrish should be in before Walls. Woodson should be in before Walls. But, um... Once we put Woodson and Parrish in, I'm not opposed to putting Everson Walls in the Hall of Fame. I'm not opposed. Again, I'm more of a big hole guy. I'm more of a big hole guy because we're letting in basically the same number of people that we did in 1966 when we opened the hall with double the teams. Cooks, right answer here. Yeah, Wesley Walls Hall are very good. No, not Wesley Walls. Definitely not Wesley Walls. Everson Walls, yes. Wesley Walls, no. I think Wesley Walls were pushing it. Wesley Walls, definitely not before Todd Christensen or Mark, or Mark Bavaro. I'm not even sure any of those have, have a case to get in. Maybe Todd. Maybe Todd. I, I'd be fine putting Todd. Mark Bavaro, mm, I don't know about that. Never played for a team in the AFC North. Landry, Watkins, Robinson, Cooks. 
I think the Jack should add a color rush helmet similar to the two tone helmet from 2009-2012. Uh, you're probably. I actually have a, a, a prototype. Hang on. They actually sell these on the NFL website. So I'm guessing you're thinking something like this. I'm guessing with that you're thinking something like. Um, let me see. Am I on my own frame with this? Yeah, I'm guessing you're thinking something like this. Yeah, the, the problem is that, um, no, Watkins is not all very good. No. I mean, sure, Robinson's all very good. Cooks is the right answer here. Now, um, the problem is that they, with the two-tone helmets, part of the reason they got rid of them was because receipt where quarterbacks said it, it made it tougher for them to actually locate the receivers. Because they couldn't tell what helmet, what color the helmet was. So I don't think we're ever seeing that again. Never won a playoff game along the active roster. Landry, Robinson, Cooks, or Watkins. The problem with the, the two-tone with the Jaguars, um, this. So this, it didn't fade to black. It just immediately cut off. So this, it just cuts off. If it was like a gradient, maybe it would work. Like this is sort of a gradient. Sort of a gradient. It's not entirely a gradient, but it is sort of a gradient. This is just, it cuts off. It's like they ran out of paint. Alan Robinson is the right answer here. Jarvis Landry did win a playoff game on an active roster. Jarvis Landry, he played in that wildcard game against the Steelers. All right, let's see. We got two questions left. I think we got two questions. Yeah. Paul Topper. Oh, man, 96K. I would say 100,000 point rule is in play, but I'm not even sure you need to do it. I'm not even sure you need to do it. My favorite Jack helmet, um, this one. I mean, of course, I, I got to love this one. Never wore it because of the, um, the lawsuit, but I do love this one. Question number nine. Had a 100-plus receiving yard game in a Super Bowl. Robinson, Cooks, Landry, or Watkins? I do have the mock-up 91 Niners prototype. I need to get... I, I have the, the Patriots um, helmet from the 1960s. I need to get next the, the drunken Bronco helmet from the 60s. That's next. And there, there's some on eBay that I'm, I'm looking at. So, we'll see. That might be the next thing. But I also got to get Broncos D helmet. I don't have a Broncos D for some reason. All right. True or false? 01 Duke... 07 UF, 09 UNC, 12 Kentucky, 18 over the best national champs of the 21st century. I'd say true. I would say true on that. Cooks, right answer here. Silver helmet again in the future? Yeah, it looks clean. Yeah, I, I, I'd be totally down for, for a silver helmet. That looks super clean. Super, super clean. All right, let's see the scores. We got Paul Topper, 108,000 points. Who man. Oh, man. All right, wait. I lost my YouTube comment section. There we go. Question number 10. Yeah, I wish the Jags were the 90s uniforms. You and me both. You and me both. Never had a game with more than 10 receptions. Robinson, Watkins, Landry, or Cook. You and me both. Trust me. We need to go with with um, with um our our uniforms that we wore in the 90s. Those were clean. Those were some of the best uniforms ever. I mean, the ones we have now are fine. They're just pretty plain. They're pretty plain. You need just like a, a trim of gold. You need a trim of gold on these. The 90s ones are, are great. And hopefully we wear them as like a throwback when Tom Coughlin gets inducted into the Pride next year. Hopefully. Oh, man. Clippers just got an one. Oh, the Clippers just got an one. They came back. 107 all. Kawhi going to the line. Right answer is Robinson. Robinson is the right answer here. Is 11 Butler the worst runner-up of all time? Um, at least in the 21st century, yeah. I mean, that, that natty was brutal. That natty was brutal. That was that was a brick lane contest. That's what, what did they shoot? Twenty two percent that game. Forgot what they shot, but it was something like tw like in the twenties. It was awful. Paul Topper with the win. Ranger Hanky in seventh doesn't get the power up. Paul Topper, congratulations. I should also know as things Sam Woody Baltimore on has the lead. For the wild card going into the final round, but that could change when we do this final round, which we're going to play a game called Seed Sets. Play a game called Seed Sets. 
Now, before I go any further, just want to say this is the last free way to make it into the final. This is the last free round. Now, it's not to say you can't play and hang out and do anything, but after this round is done, if you do not donate, um, you are not eligible to win the cash prize. So just something to keep in mind, that the only way after this round to make it is through the donation leaderboard. Again, 20 bucks more gets in automatically. Less than 20 bucks you plan to play a knockout on HQ Trivia Cell, where the last one standing gets the final spot. With that being said, this game is called Seed Sets. How it works is like this. I say the seeds from a specific year. The AFC seed and the NFC seed. You job, your job is to tell me quite simply what year that was. As an easy example, if I said one seeds, Ravens and the Niners, you would say 2023. If I said eight seeds, Lions and the Browns, there's only one year that we've had eight seeds. So 1982. Does everyone get how this game works? So I tell you, I say what seeds were those in the AFC and the NFC. Your job is to tell me. Um, which one? If Mike Tirico wasn't with NBC, which network would best fit him? Ooh, that's a good question. That's a good question. I would say... <sighs> what network best fit him? My guess would be... <sighs> I'm trying to think like, like in terms of like sports that they have. So that's the way you have to do it. You have to think of, like, the sports they have. I mean, Tariqa was a studio host for, like, Fox coverage. At, like, soccer would be good. Play-by-play -play be the one at Fox. I think Fox is probably the best fit. All right, question number one. Let's do it. Five seeds. Browns and the Eagles. 2020, 21, 2, or 3. Would Florida have won it all in 2011 to beat Butler? I don't think so. That game was heartbreaking. That game was... I think the most heartbreaking of the of the Elite Eight losses. I think it's probably the probably the the one in um probably 2012. Do I see TNT slash TBS getting back to NFL coverage in the near future? I'm not sure about near future. I don't know about near future, but maybe not the next TV deal, but the the one after that. We'll see, because the future of like Turner Media with True TV being a sports network now, we'll see. We'll see. I don't think this next TV deal, but maybe the one after that. 2023 right answer here. Worst Jags uniform and worst uniform across all teams since Jags have been in the league. Worst Jags uniform, definitely the mustard uniforms. The worst one across all teams? Ooh. Question number two. Five seeds. Bills, Seahawks. 2017, 18, 19, 20. I'd probably say those abominations the Bills wore in the early 2000s. Those abominations the Bills wore. Bills trade Josh Allen to any NFC team. <laughs> Will Noah Eagle be the lead player to play announcer for the NBA on NBC if it comes back? I would think so. I mean, he did he did work with the Clippers. I would guess he'd be the number one. 2019 right answer. As long as they get Round Ball Rock. They gotta get Round Ball Rock. But only the version from SNL. What if it was the same C position for another season? Then I don't include it as, as one of the answers. Question number three. Because that does happen a few times. One seeds, Pats and Packers. 07, 09, 10, or 11. The cleanest 75th anniversary uniform. Broncos were pretty clean. The Broncos were clean. The Bears were the worst. The Broncos were, were super clean. The Broncos unis from that year were majestic. Absolutely majestic. NBC would snag Kevin Harlan for the number one player to play for the NBA. Problem is that I'm not sure Harlan would do it. I don't think Harlan would do it because he wants to call NFL games. How are you calling NFL games on NBC? 2011 right answer here. No, Eagles were the 15 in 2020. Eagles didn't make the playoffs that year. Eagles, that was the year they fired Doug Peterson. They didn't make the playoffs in 2020. 2011 right answer here. 2007, the Cowboys were the one. 2007 Cowboys were the one. Question four, five seeds, Jets and Cowboys. 06, 08, 09, or 10? Yeah, because Tariko is still going to be the one. Nothing changes there. I'm going to jump on the, in the Sixers game. Um, I, don't, I don't think Kevin Hall would sign a... I don't think he would sign a deal that hasn't worked for NBC and CBS. I don't think that benefits anyone. You have to stay with one network. 
I mean, I know that, like, obviously, no Eagle does the Nickelodeon game, but that's a bit different. That's one game a year. I don't know how Kevin Harlan would do it. 2006, right answer here. Because then Harlan's not going to work NBA games on NBC when March Madness is happening? Like, like, I don't know how that would work. Landry is not on any team right now. Jarvis Landry is not on any team right now. Clowney signed with the Panthers. Two-year contract worth 20 mil. Josh Reynolds with the Broncos. Two-year 14 million. I think Reynolds is a very good wide receiver three. Obviously, he lost to Jerry Judy. Needs some wide receiver help. I think it makes sense. Clowney, Panthers move. Um... Look, if you play something in Baltimore last year, it's really solid. It's a really solid pickup for Carolina. Um, it's kind of moves that if you're Carolina, like some veteran leadership, like because you did lose a lot of guys defensively. Not that the defense was any good, but I think it's a smart move. I I sort of like what Carolina is doing this offseason. Not like they're they're, they're not like a contender or anything, but they're giving Bryce Young help. They've added some nice pieces like. I'm not saying they're going to be good next year just because I'm not sold on Bryce Young, but they'll be better than they were last year. Especially if Canales is better than Frank Reich, which again will not be that hard. Four seeds, Dolphins, Niners. Was it 95, 96, 97, 98? Kevin Harlan for Prime. I could see that. I could see Prime for Kevin Harlan. You do the Thursday night game on Prime. Probably say you probably need more sports. You probably need more sports, but he could work for Prime and work for another network. I mean, we saw like we see the Kirk Herb Street, Al Michaels to some extent. So we could that that could work. What team could I possibly see trade for Terry McLaurin? I don't think any team will. The Sixers won the jump. One gotta get off the. How do you not get the shot off? How do you not get the shot off? Drive to the hoop. You don't even look at the clock. How do you not get the shot off? Ninety eight is the right answer here. I don't think anything will. I think if a team was going to trade, maybe Jacksonville, just because they do need wide receiver one. What are the What are the Sixers coaches upset about with the refs? He didn't get the shot off. That's on them. Yeah, well, I'd be shot with all you do right now too. Mile high lefty. Yeah, the clock start at the right time. You gotta get the shot off. What are they? What are they possibly complaining about? There was no foul. And if there was, it happened after the clock hit zero. <sighs> so stupid. I mean, you blew like a 20-point lead, too. You have no reason to complain. Question number six. It's three seeds. Steelers, Cowboys. 94, 95, 96, 97. Like, what am I possibly missing? Again, watch without any audit. What am I possibly missing? What argument do the Sixers possibly have? That was the stupidest ending to a game I've seen in quite some time. Jack, you know, with the Panthers suit with their uniforms. 2012 Panthers redesigned the logo, made little changes with their uniforms. Jags only changed the logo. Well, to be fair, they did change the unis in 2013. They weren't allowed to change the uniforms in 2012. But in 2013, they changed them, and they changed them drastically. It wasn't good. Costco may not require any non-member over 18 to have a valid ID to enter stores. I I, I thought you had to have an ID anyways to, to get into stores. I thought you could get in without a member ID, member ID. Unless you're with someone. I didn't think that was possible. Now, granted, obviously, I'm assuming this doesn't apply to, like, families. Like, if you're, if you're a 40-year-old that has a kid, you take the kid grocery shopping with you. The kid obviously doesn't have a valid ID. Like, you can't leave the kid behind. Like, I... Like, I thought you had to have an idea to get into Costco as it was. At least every time I have to get into Costco. 1C, Broncos, Niners. 86, 88, 89, 90. Three one Tampa with 26 seconds. Who will the broadcast team in, in uh, Brazil be for the Peacock game? Well, here's the thing. The um, I did a video on this earlier today. I did a video on this earlier today. I think it's going to be Noah Eagle, Todd Blackledge. There is no, um, there's no good game that week in the Big Ten. NBC is the Big Ten game for Saturday night. There is no good game that week in the Big Ten. 89 is runs here. Yes, you have Texas-Michigan. That game is probably, according to reports, according to Texas' own AD, that's a new game on Fox. Texas-Michigan is a new game on Fox. So look at the Big Ten schedule that week. You got Iowa State-Iowa. You got Ohio State-Western Michigan. Nebraska-Colorado. Like... You can let Noah Eagle and Todd Blackledge go to Brazil for that. You don't need to have them there for week two 
of College Football season. Question eight. I did see McDonald's starting to sell Krispy Kreme. Four C Jets Giants, 81, 82, 80, 45. I will say there's nothing like a Krispy Kreme donut, especially down south. I, I like Dunkin' more, but a good, warm Krispy Kreme donut? Oh, man. Yeah, you can sacrifice six scare for Big Ten that week. You won't do Tarico because Tarico is going to do the Thursday night game and the Sunday night game. You can't have him flying back down to, um, you can't have him flying back down and, and, and up. 85 right answer here. Did this force, I'm not sure if this forced a wild card game to be on a Saturday. I'm, I'm not sure if it forced it because the Giants weren't at home. That's, um, oh wait, oh, I was thinking 81. I was thinking 81. I was thinking 81. No, you're right. You're right. For 85, it did. Yes. For 85, it did. I was thinking... I, I was thinking 81 because they uh, the Giants were 5 in, in 81. Yeah, you're right. You're right on 85. Yes. Mile High Lefty. Commanding lead. Ranger Hanky in second. All right. We'll see how Ranger Hanky wants to play this. We'll see how Mile High wants to play this. BW Falk in third. Eganator and XD Gamer in the top five. All right. All right. Here we go. Question number nine. Three seeds, Bengals, Packers, 81, 82, 83, 84. Packers should go get a wide receiver, but we know Robert Kraft does not want an offense. I don't even know what they're doing at quarterback. I don't know what they're doing at quarterback. They have no receivers right now. Kendrick Bourne's the only halfway decent guy they've got. Yeah, Jack Collins with permanently in the studio next season. Yeah, he's not going to be doing no reading games. Thank God. Thank God. The 81 Jets still at Shea. Yes, I did, I did a video on that game. I did a video on that game. Um, how they didn't have a goalpost. Knicks beat the Raptors by 44. Holy cow. Yeah, this was the only year in the 80s the Packers made the playoffs. So you could have gone off that. 82. Mile high lefty in first. Beautiful fuck. Ranger Hanky in third. I'm not crazy about Mayo. I'm not crazy. He's done nothing that's impressed me so far. Question number 10. Here we go. Final question of the round. Two seeds. Raiders and the Rams. 75, 6, 7, or 8. How much... Wait. How much of a difference in voice is there between Ian and Noah Eagle? Not a lot. Honestly, not a lot. Very similar cadences. No Eagle Kentucky Derby coverage? I could see it. I could see it. Although I'm not sure where we would fit in because Tarico calls the races. Tarico does the, the stuff. I don't know if you if Noah Eagle would, would fit in. But maybe one of these days. When Tarico retires. ESPN's been falling off a cliff. First take is a mess of a show. I mean, first take. The ratings are through the roof on first take. They're crushing undisputed. But ESPN uploading clips that are not really to sports. Yeah, they uploaded one about, like, cats being better than dogs. It's like, what? Like, like there's actual stuff to talk about. If you need to fill time about cats being better than dogs in a... In this time of year... Like, I get, like, off-topic stuff for, like, an NFL show in June. But right now, if you're doing a sports show and you're talking about cats from your other dogs, like, what are we doing here? Mile High Lefty with the win. Ranger Hanky, though, coming inside the top five, getting that power up. And on top of that, um, we have Woody Baltimore on who gets the wild card with the highest score of the night for any of the rounds. 69-234. So, Ranger Hanky, congratulations. You're in the final. And, of course, Mile High Lefty, who has been on a tear lately with this game. 126,000 points. One week after putting up in one of the rounds that we did, about 144,000. Whew. Holy cow. Beautiful. Beautiful stuff. All right. So, here's what we got. We got Styles Clash, Jane May, Paul Topper, Mile High, Bay City Roller, Keller, Ranger, Hanky, Woody Baltimore. We got a few more spots in the final. Now, um, oh, it's your last comment. Wait, I have not seen the last comment. Wait. 
Do I think USA bids for money for playing out there losing WWE on Monday nights when the rights come up again or does Disney hand a blank check to the NFL keep on ESPN? I think they hand a blank check. They just gave Joe Buck $100 million. They gave Troy Aikman like $80 million. They, um, they hand him a blank check. Blank check. I, I don't see him going to, to USA. Plus, plus on top of that, I'm not sure like USA, like the NFL wants some of its games on linear too. I'm not sure with USA you'd get that. It'd be way too complicated for the rights too because... Okay, USA gets the games, but then what, what about, like, the Week 18 games? You put them on ABC. I don't know. What do you put them on for, um... What do you put them on for USA? I don't know. All right, with that being said... Yeah, ESPN taking over regional rights? I would have no problem with that. Although, I will say, MLB TV is a very good app. MLB TV is the best of the streaming apps. Of the, um... Of the streaming services, they're the best. Not counting blackouts. But in terms of, like, the quality, in terms of the interface, they're the best. All right, I'm going to put five minutes on the clock. Um, again, any donation of 20 bucks or more gets into the final automatically. Less than 20 bucks, you get to play in that play and knock around HQ Trivia style where the last one standing gets to the final spot. This is the last way to make it into the final. If you don't donate, you can still play and hang out. You just won't be eligible to win the cash prize. So just something to keep in mind. Oh, do I think the, the guy's going to be banned for life in the NBA? He should be. He should be. If he if he bet all games, he should be banned for life. I, I've always been one strike you're out with gambling. I've always been that way. I even said that, I'm not being hypocrite, I even said that with Calvin Ridley when we got him, I said we, like, I said that, like, he should not be allowed to play. I'm happy that he is playing, but, like, he should not be allowed to play. You're still back off from four teams, yeah, that's stupid. Blackout rules don't make any sense, like, under today's format, the way that it is, at least. I get blackout rules in the sense that you want these networks to be able to show local ads to people, but at the same time... Um, same time, there is some place I don't get those stations. Beatley Fock with a tour. Thank you so much. All right, Beatley Fock. Looking for a shot or a spot in that final. Donating two bucks. 52 is in the pot right now. You're going to bed. How's it going, Summer? Um, thank you for tuning in. Good luck tomorrow, opening day. And good luck tomorrow, Jackson. Have a great, great time. Will YouTube TV and MLB Network come to an agreement this season? I think so. I think so. They'll come to something. The show is biased towards certain teams. It's always been biased towards certain teams. It's not a new phenomenon. That's every show on ESPN. That's why Good Morning Football has been such a phenomenon. They're not biased towards teams. They talk about everyone equally when they have a chance. When it, There has never been a time in my life that First Take was not biased towards certain teams. Like the Lakers and the Cowboys and... And the, the power teams. There has never been a time in my life when that was the case. It's not a new phenomenon. Ready for another miserable White Sox season. 58 wins is my prediction. Yeah, I'm going to say 64 and 98 is my pick for the Sox. Look, I think Netflix getting WWE, yeah, it's $5 billion. It's a lot of money, but... Live sports are the way to go. Live sports are the way to go. Especially something like WWE, because here's the thing with WWE. There's no offseason. You do that all year round. So you don't have a reason to cancel. Like a lot of these streaming platforms, like let's say you watch, let's say you subscribe to Peacock or, or let's say you subscribe to Prime because of the NFL. All right, NFL season doesn't happen past December for Prime. So you can go eight months without Prime. WWE, you're a WWE fan? 12 months a year. They have someone pretty much every single week. So, it makes sense. It's like the perfect sport to for a streaming service. Because you stay year-round. 85 wins for the Giants? Yeah, I mean, I think they make the playoffs. I think the Giants make the playoffs. Alright. Who will everybody be tanking for in the 2025 draft? I don't expect my pass to be near the playoffs, so I don't care. So I care more about the tank offs. Yeah, there's no real, like, QB1 coming out right now. I guess Sanders is probably the the, the best of the bunch as things stand. He's probably projected number one pick next year, but I, I don't know. There's still so much that can happen. It's not like Caleb Williams were renewed right away. It's not like Bryce Stanley had a pretty good feeling. It's not like um, Trevor Lawrence... So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. 
Um, I, I would say right now the number one pick is, is Sugar Sanders from Colorado, but even that, I mean, that's that's very up in the air. That could change. It could be like a Matt Barkley situation where he was projected to be the number one pick only to 2013. He winds up going in the fourth round. Could be something like that. We'll see. There's no clear cut number one. There is no betting favorite. Who actually, who is the betting favorite for 2025? I actually don't know. I'm guessing Sanders is the betting favorite. I'm guessing Sanders is the betting favorite. But I don't know. Carson Beck, um, Travis Hunter, but you're not going to, I don't think you're picking a guy like him number one. I think I think it's going to be probably Sanders. Well, last time receiver was taking number one, I believe it was Keyshawn Johnson. Keyshawn Johnson in uh, 96 with the Jets. Keyshawn Johnson was the last number one pick as a wide receiver. And before that, I was Irving Fryer in 84. It was only up in twice. It's only happened twice. One team that can surpass and one team that can underachieve this season. I honestly think surpass. I think the the Falcons could make the NFC Championship. If I'm if I'm betting right now who's making the NFC Championship, I'm saying Niners and the Falcons. I really am in light. I really like the Falcons this year. Again, we don't know Raheem Morris. He's the one thing I'm iffy on. But I do like Raheem. I, I do like the Falcons roster, and I do like that division. NFC's not that good. I do like Atlanta a lot. Um, underachieve. I'm not crazy about the Colts, especially if Richardson gets hurt because he got hurt pretty much every single game last season. I am not crazy about the Colts, especially the rest of the division's gotten better. Maybe not the Jaguars, but the the Titans have gotten better. The Texans have gotten better. I'm not sure the Colts can repeat what they did last year. Andre Johnson did not go number one. No, Andre Johnson did not go number one. He went number, um, he went later. He went later. He was number, it was 2003. Was he two? Or was he three? I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. Well, Palmer was one. I think Andre was two. I think Andre was two that year. Because Palmer was one. And Joey Harrington was was not Joey Harrington. Charles Rogers was two. Johnson was three. Johnson was three. I was like, Detroit had the number two pick that year. I was like, I know Detroit had the number two pick that year. That's why I said Joey Harrington, not Charles Rogers. Yeah, no, Johnson went three. Johnson went three. I think that pick worked out pretty well for the Texans. All right, with it being said, time for the final round. Fourth and goal, 52 bucks in the pot. It is going to be a 46, I think, yeah, 46. Once PayPal takes its cut. Fourth and goal. How this game works is like this. Again, anyone can play, you just won't be eligible to win the cash prize if you do not, if you're not in the finals. 10 questions, just like fourth and goal. Winner of the round amongst the finalists wins the cash prize. Here we go. Uh, one MLB team that can surpass expectations will be disappointing. Surpass, again, I think the Nationals have a shot. I really think the Nationals, they came on strong at the end of last season. I think the Nationals have a shot. Um, disappoint? I mean, based on relative expectations, the Yankees. And maybe, maybe the Mariners also, maybe the Mariners. Yeah, the Nats retired to say connect with the Cherry Blossoms. Like, one of the few good say connects. There's not a lot of good State Connect jerseys. Nats were one of the good ones. Nats were one of the good ones. There's some that are good. I like the Astros. The D-backs ones are phenomenal. The the Serpientes ones are phenomenal. The D-backs City Connect jerseys are 10 out of 10. Love those. But most teams don't have good City Connects. White Sox, or not not White Sox. White Sox, yeah, White Sox are good. Um, I, I meant to say Red Sox. Red Sox have the worst. Their jerseys like are not even the same colors. Oh, the Red Sox ones are terrible. Uh, the fact that USA is NBC behind... Oh, yeah, USA does have NBC. They could make a series. That is true. They could do that. Yeah, I forgot USA had NBC behind it. All right, let's do this. Go to everyone. Here we go. Question number one. The only AFC North team at the 2021 NFL Draft 
that did not spend a first round pick on an offensive player. Ravens, Bengals, Steelers, Browns. Well, the Red Stick connect day one, yeah. D backs Friday Serpientes games are, are fun. I mean, that's one of my favorite days of the ballpark. Friday night with the Serpientes jerseys. Those are usually the best days of the ballpark. Although there's something oddly calming about going like a Monday or a Tuesday night when no one's there. Like 12,000 people in attendance. You just have the whole road to yourself. Like, there's something calming about that. Browns. Game idea. Put players on the wheel. Whoever the wheel wins on there's a true or false round regarding only that player. Ooh. That's interesting. That's interesting. Question number two. Two-time Pope running back Marion Butts played for three teams in his career. Who's the out one out? Oilers, Chargers, Pats, or Broncos? Just because they don't share colors doesn't mean they aren't good. If they connect to the say something accurate color. I get that to some extent. The problem is that we're getting to like NBA territory where you should be able... Here, here's how I look at it. Get rid of the score bug. Look, let's go back to like the 80s where there was no score bug on the screen. I should be able to tell what teams are playing in the game without any graphics, without any score bug. I should be able to tell by looking at the screen what teams are playing in the game. Bronco is the right answer here. I should be able to look at a picture and tell you what two teams are playing in that game. And some of the, like, NBA jerseys, some of the MLB ones are not... They just don't hit the mark in that way. Question number three. In 2013, the Chargers went 3-1 and against the NFC East. Lone loss came against what team? Dallas, New York, Philly, or Washington? Because, again, because, like, I'd be hypocrite if I said otherwise, because, like, the D-backs, Serpientes, I mean, the colors in that... I mean, I, I guess to some extent the sand, but... They're not really the same that they have, but it, it works. You can tell it's the D-backs. If I look at the back of a Red Sox City Connect jersey, I can't tell it's the Red Sox. And it's more with teams with less tradition that I'm more okay with it than teams with a lot of tradition like the Red Sox. Washington, right answer here. It was an overtime game. Overtime game. Some bad play calling by Ken Wisenhunt. Question number four. Of the four teams he played for, two-time Pro Bowl corner, Leo Shepard made both Pro Bowls with what team? Eagles, Vikes, Raiders, or Jets? And thank you for the follow, Ravens fan. 3825. Thank you so much. I'm intrigued to see if ESPN debuts a new MLB score tomorrow. Uh, they did that for the... um. They unveiled something for Dodgers Padres. Because that was a week ago. They did that. They're adding win probability. Permanently. Because you need win probability on the screen at all times for some bizarre reason. Eagles, right answer here. Like one-sixth of the league wears some combo of navy and red, one-third wears any kind of blue and red. I can hardly tell what teams are playing from their units right now. That, that's fair. You know, that, that's actually pretty fair. That's fair. I'll, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Question five. Two-time Pro Bowl wide receiver Pat Sud still played for three teams in his NFL career. Who's the other one out? Cards, Lions, Pats, or Rams? Agree or disagree? Bengals from the 60s to 70s had the laziest uniform design. Agree. It was basically just the Browns. That's a team, they literally were a carbon copy of the Browns. They had no identity. It was basically the Browns unis. It was lazy. It was, it was, it was the, the meme of, can I copy your homework, sure, but don't make it look obvious. That was what the Bengals were. Their uniforms were back then. And then they got one of the greatest helmets of all time. Cardinals, right answer here. Could be a short sale on the aisle with a lad strain. That's awesome. Yeah, I haven't heard any updates, so that's good. So if he's back by like the end of if he's back by the end of April, you have Montgomery as probably the two. Kelly's your three. Eduardo is your four. Fots your five. Oh. Let's see the scores at the halfway point. Mile High Lefty in first. Styles Clash in second. Ranger Hankey in third. Woody Baltimore in fourth. Paul Topper rounding up the top five. Question six. Of the four QBs that started a game for the Niners in 74, who started the most number of games? Norm Sneed, Joe Reed, Dennis Morrison, or Tom Owen? Yeah, possibly at the end of April, D-backs top four will be Gallon, Erod, Montgomery, and Kelly. And then five is the five. Can't forget Fod is the five. He was very good last season once he came up the final time. 
First two stints in the majors, not so much, but the third time he came up, oh man. And the playoffs he had? Phenomenal. Pitched a great game against the Dodgers. World Series, he was on his game. Fott's a former first-round pick. He was a rookie last season. Like, I am excited for Fott. I'm really excited for him. Tom Owen is the right answer here. Fact or fiction, Astros sign Mike Clevenger. I think fact. I think they will. I think they'll get him. Yeah, Bengals' first coach was Paul Brown, so there's a reason they look like the Browns. I mean, they were named after him. <laughs> Basically. It makes sense. Yeah. Question seven. After 13 seasons with the Niners, four-time Pro Bowl offensive lineman Bruce Bosley ended his career with what team? Bills, Rams, Falcons, Saints. Gallon's your pick to win the Cy Young. See, last year I said yes on that. This year, not, I'm not sure, because he kind of fell off the second half of last season. And he's getting on the older side of things to some extent. Yeah, I'm not sure Gallon... Like, honestly, I'm not sure Gallon is... Right now, I honestly think Gallon's the third best pitcher on the D-backs. I think Montgomery and Kelly are better than him. Falcons were answered here. Would I like to make the Undertaker? Yeah, why, why not? Why not? Seems like a nice guy. Who's the favorite to go number one in the NBA draft? There is no clear-cut favor. There is no clear-cut favor for the NBA. It's a pretty weak class on paper. There's no consensus number one. Like there was last year, even the year before with Cade. In their 27-20 win over the Raiders in the 85 Divisional 3, Patriots score a touchdown. Who's the one out? Craig James, Evan Fryer, Jim Bowman, or Lynn Dawson? If I had to pick a D-back to win an award, here, here's what I would do. If I were to pick a D-back to win an award, I would say... Montgomery's probably the best value play for Cy Young. What are, what are the odds for Cy Young? What are the odds? Is Gallon one of the favorites? Uh, I don't know about that. He fell off last season at the very end. He is fifth favorite. That's yeah, not the best odds. Irving Fryer. I don't play the show. No, I don't have a P. I don't have a PlayStation. Strider's the favorite. Montgomery. Oh, Caesars has Montgomery plus 6,000. That's that's good value. Where's Merrill Kelly at? Merrill Kelly's plus 5,000? Yeah, that's that's not bad value. Let's see the scores of two questions to go. Styles Clash at first mile high lefty in second. Thoughts on lace stories regarding Jerry Trainer. I didn't hear anything. Well, they're good stories, right, with Jerry Trainer, right? There, there was nothing that bad that came out about Jerry Trainer, right? He, he protected everyone, right? Jerry Trainer. I've heard nothing but bad, like good things about Jerry Trainer. Like he acted like I heard like stuff like he acted silly on set intentionally to prevent Dan Schneider from like being uncomfortable around the kids. Like he seems like a really really good guy. That's gonna break my heart if anything bad came out about him. I, I don't think anything came out about him. I saw the whole documentary. Nothing. He was never mentioned in that. In 2015, the Cowboys went one and three against the AFC East. The lone win came against what team? Dolphins, Bills, Pats, or Jets? And were the NL MVP odds? Right? I haven't heard anything bad about Jerry Trainer. Okay, NL MVP odds. Let's see. A ten dollar bet on Jazz to win MVP. I don't even see him listed as like one of the top people. That that could be a very good value play. Um, Dolphins rancher. I think Gabby Moreno. It's gonna be tough with the catcher because they don't play every game, but Gabby Moreno. Could be a very interesting pick. Because I thought he was the most valuable player on the D-backs last season. Where you can watch the documentary? HBO Max. Or Max, or whatever it's called now. Alright, where is Jazz at? Jazz is plus 16,000. Oh, wow. Alright, Styles Clash in first. Here we go. What's this final question? Here we go. The only player in Eagles history to have back-to-back -back seasons leading the league in picks. Bill Bradley, Asante Samuel, Troy Vincent, Roy Zerman. I will say this to Troy Lavello. I will say this. I I turned on Troy Lavello in a positive way after last season. Because last season, all the problems that I, I had with Lavello are gone. Like, oh, you're playing Carson Kelly too much. He's not on the team anymore. Oh, Bump Garner should not be in the rotation. He is gone. Oh, um, Nick Ahmed's getting way too many um, reps. He's gone. Oh, you're you're botching the whole closer by committee thing. It should not be closer by committee. You're 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 botching this. 
Well, now we have a closer with Seawall when he gets healthy. Bill Bradley, 1971-72. I'm just, I just want to see. Is Moreno? Yeah, Moreno, like some books don't even have him on there. Plus 15,000 at BetMGM. DraftKings has him at plus 14,000. Yeah, Moreno is not a bad play. Throw a dollar down, win, win that much. Like, that's not, that's not bad. Big dogs or small dogs? Oh, small dogs. Not even close. Small dogs. Winner is going to be Styles Clash. 43,443. Takes the win and takes tonight's game of JG9 Live. 52 bucks. Gonna be 46 once PayPal takes this cut. I'll let you know as soon as this stream is done. But that concludes tonight's game, everyone. I hope you guys have been playing a chat with me over the last nine years or so minutes. Whether this is your first time watching me or whether you've been a long time subscriber on my YouTube channel, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for your support. Oh, wait. Name the worst sports article I've ever seen. I saw one that says how to bet on Iowa women's basketball. And it's literally just you, you, you place a bet. You literally just bet. You just log on to a sports book and you, you, you bet. I know Ahmed's a likable guy. I, I, I like Ahmed. I like Ahmed. He just, he, he wasn't cutting it, but you know what? He, he played a long time in Arizona. Seems like a really nice guy. I have nothing against the comment. I have nothing against the comment. Just, he wasn't cutting it by the end. But thank you so much. Congrats on the win, Styles Clash. In terms of streams again, enjoy baseball season starting tomorrow. We'll have content coming out tomorrow as well. Um, UFL, UFL season, Saturday, Sunday. 12 hours this weekend with me watching UFL Season 2. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're doing all the games. I cannot wait. We got football again to some extent. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be absolutely awesome. We got, we're got we doing all the games for the most part. We're going to have a game this week. I think we're doing three games next week. We're going to have a game the week after that. You, you, you see the schedule on my streams and everything. It's going to be a lot of fun. So thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks as always for a fun night.